Uh, right for so long, people of Rainbow Map here. Today we're going to be talking about Shakur Stevenson versus Yoshino. This is going to be my pre fight analysis on the fight. And look, man, I think people are underestimating this Japanese. However, I still think that Shakur will pull, pull it off. And I'm going to be talking about the reasons why right now. Let's get right into it. The first one we're going to see with Yoshino, which I think is a very dangerous move, is actually walking and blading. Okay, when you're walking on the back foot against a guy like Shakur Stevenson, who's just counter the shit out of you? Okay, you cannot be doing this. You have to be aggressive enough to be on the front foot when you come in, and um, you also have to stay close to him. If you lean in or if you walk and blade it against Stevenson, he'll just counter the shit out of you. And I think this is one habit that will cost him the fight. You know, Stevenson will just toy with him every time he tries to walk in like this. He walks in on the back foot, as you can see right there. He walks in quite bladed even, okay, which I think is a weak position for him. If he wants to walk in, he has to walk in on the front foot, he cannot be bladed. This is a really dangerous uh, move or habit for him, which I think Stevenson will take advantage of. So let's see another one. The next thing we'll see is the overhand right, which we'll see most of the time with this with him is that he likes to uh, stay, he likes to stay rounded, he doesn't like to move back a lot. And then he moves his head, you know, side to side, he bobs and weaves. And then when he finds that right time, he shoots that overhand right. Now, why is this a dangerous move against Stevenson? Because to me, it's just too difficult to catch Stevenson with an overhand right. If you want to catch him, you know, watch the Oscar battle this fight. The only way to catch him really is by throwing straight punches, throwing that straight right hand. You cannot catch him by throwing these uh, wild overhand rights. He'll just step back, he'll uh, step back and then he'll counter you right away. So let's see another one. Overhand right, bam. All, I mean, look at, look at Nakatani. Nakatani isn't even as mobile of a fighter as Stevenson. And he was able to step back on that shit. Okay, it becomes predictable after a while. And guys who bank on one shot against Stevenson, usually they get scored. And to me, Yoshina is one of those dudes, although he has some good combinations. You know, he has a tendency to bank on one shot. He has a tendency to throw one and done, okay? And so that's an example right here. This is one punch where he only throws it and then he's done is the overhand right. And to me, uh, Stevenson will find an easy time to figure this shit out and then counter him right away with a short left, which I think is, is the best counter for this one. Just step back and then throw your short left hand, or you can actually step back and then throw your right hook. Either way, uh, it's gonna be a really useful tool right here. Or it's gonna be a useful counter for uh, Stevenson, whatever he chooses. So the next thing we're gonna see is the overuse of parries. As you can see here, he likes to parry a lot, even though there's no really jabs, or even though there's not a lot of jabs coming in, he likes to parry a lot. It's like a habit for him, you know? Right here, as you can see, he's parrying, even though there's really no jab coming in. I think that's just a habit that he built up from, um, from his muscle memory. That's just muscle memory for him. He likes to parry a lot. And then what happens is even though there's no jab coming in, um, he, does that parry as like a as a proactive thing almost and so if he does this against stevenson in my opinion stevenson with that lonely hand with that long sword he likes to extend he likes to extend that out a lot so he's gonna make yoshino he's gonna make yoshino overreact to these um, to these lead hand probes and to these pillow jabs and then eventually he's gonna open up the sides so after that he's gonna get caught with a lot of hooks and he's gonna get caught with a lot of punches to the side you know i'm not saying that that Yoshino is not vulnerable to the center, but he likes to sacrifice or he likes to parry a lot. And by doing so, he opens up a lot on that right side of his face. So in my opinion, that's gonna be a home, or that's, or the, the rear hook of Stevenson will find a home in that particular spot. If he overuses parries, if he overreacts on those uh, jabs and on those probes a lot, he's gonna open up the side of his face. And then um, Stevenson will just slap the shit out of it, you know? Okay, next thing I'm gonna see now is the leaping hooks. So as I can see, he's gonna come in, he's gonna fake the right hand first, really good tactic right here, fake the right hand, and then he's gonna leap in, get some momentum on that front leg, and then he's gonna leap in with his left hook. Again, in my opinion, this is too telegraph, and Stevenson will, will just step back, and then it'll counter him with the right hook, as uh, we've seen him do time and time again. In my opinion, the best counter to this is the right hook to a pivot, okay? So you throw the right hook, and then you pivot out on the right in one motion. In my opinion, that's the best way to counter this shit, and it's going to be a really useful weapon for Stevenson, because he likes to leap in with these shots a lot. You know, he likes to leap in with these hooks, 
And all Stevenson really has to do is, first of all, he has to extend that lead hand all the time. He has to keep that lead hand active because that's going to make Yoshino reluctant to come in. And then secondly, once he does come in, he has to be prepared enough to step back. He cannot lean back too much on the back foot to where he cannot step back no more. He needs to stay neutral. He needs to be neutral with his weight so that he can step back on balance, okay? And he won't lean back or he won't rely too much on his upper body to lean back. He actually needs to stay neutral so that he can step back and then he can count right away. And so in my opinion, yes, Yoshino might hit him with some good shots. You know, Yoshino got some good fundamentals, but at the end of the day, um, I've doubted Chucker Stevenson already in the past too much to doubt him now. You know, he's proven me wrong time and time again. And I think that long lead hand of his is going to be a big problem for Yoshino. Yoshino's going to have a hard time figuring that shit out. He's going to have a hard time coming in. He's going to have a hard time even with his bobbin weaves. I think Stevenson will find a way to time him in between those head movements. And it's, gonna, it's a predictable head movement pattern that he has. So Stevenson will just use his punch of variety and use his reach and use his long reach in order to prevent Yoshino from coming in. But I think Yoshino will have his moments. But in the end, it, this is going to be a landslide win for uh, Shaker Stevenson. So that was it. I'll see you guys soon. Subscribe if you're new. That's my prediction on this fight. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. And I'll see you guys soon, man. Subscribe if you're new. And join my Patreon if you want to. Peace out.